Hi, Tim from Proclaim AV here, and today we're going to talk about the difference between dynamic and condenser microphones. Let's check it out. So let's start by mentioning that when we're talking about condenser versus dynamic microphones, we're talking about how those microphones capture sound waves and turn them into electrical signals. And each one of those do it in a slightly different way, and so they're better for some sound sources and not as good for other sound sources. So we're going to talk about how they work, and then we're going to talk about what the best application for each type of microphone is. Let's start with the dynamic microphone. Now we have here an illustration to show you how the dynamic microphone works. So let's take a look at that. Now you'll notice that in the illustration as the sound waves, number one there, come into the microphone that they'll hit and move the diaphragm. That's the blue part there, number two. And the diaphragm is attached to the coil. You can see there number three is the coil, which moves back and forth over a magnet which is number four, and creates an electrical signal that's sent out to the mixer. Now this is an unpowered microphone. So as you can imagine, it takes a pretty strong sound wave to move the whole diaphragm and magnet assembly. And this gives it some positive and some negative characteristics. So here are some of the positive characteristics. You get better volume before feedback. Since these dynamic microphones are less sensitive to sound, um, they feed back less readily. Um, another one is they work very well with loud sound sources. So a trumpet is an excellent example. Brass instruments in general are an excellent example of a loud sound source which works best with a dynamic microphone. Thirdly, dynamic mics are very durable and it's one of the reasons that they have been used for many years um, in the field for news reporters because they get bumped around, banged around, thrown in bags, um, all sorts of crazy things happen. A dynamic mic just keeps working. It's a very sturdy design. Now there are some negative characteristics about dynamic microphones. And one of them is that they're not very sensitive to sounds that are far away. Now this makes dynamic microphones a poor choice for things like uh, choirs. Uh, because they need a strong sound wave coming into them, and the further away you get from the dynamic microphone, this one here, let's try. So, I'm going to come back here, maybe about a foot, and I'm going to speak at the same level that I was speaking at before, but the dynamic mic, which this one is, just doesn't pick up as well as a condenser mic would. The second negative or con about dynamic mics is they're not as accurate as a condenser mic. Now this can be a plus or a minus. Sometimes a dynamic mic sounds very pleasant on the thing you have put it on, whatever sound source that is, somebody singing or whatever, and uh, that's a plus. But sometimes when you want to mic something and get a very good accurate re recording or representation of it, a dynamic mic may not do the job so well. So let's talk about some applications for dynamic microphones. The first one, of course, is solo voice. Uh, dynamic mics were great for a soloist or even a group of people who each have their own microphone. A dynamic mic is an excellent choice for that, um, especially if you're worried about feedback. You have several microphones. They do really well with that. Brass is a good um, application that we talked about. Uh, spoken word for... Um, Narration, for speaking in general, dynamic mics generally sound good and are excellent for the gain before feedback. And then, of course, electronically amplified instruments with a speaker, so it's maybe like a keyboard or something like that, a dynamic mic can be an excellent um, choice for an amplified instrument that you need to put a mic in front of that speaker. And then finally, in situations that are prone to feedback, you definitely want to think about using dynamic microphones. You're going to be able to get a much better signal when you use a dynamic uh, before feedback than you will with a condenser. 
So let's talk about some situations where a dynamic mic is really not a good choice. And one of those is miking groups. Um, while you may be able to turn up the gain enough to mic a group, um, you're probably going to create feedback problems um, in the process. And dynamic mics just don't work well for any kind of distance miking. That's another one. So if you can't get that mic really close to your sound source uh, when you're trying to mic it, a dynamic generally isn't a good choice. You're much better off to use a condenser microphone. Now let's take a look at how a condenser microphone works. And for this, we have an illustration as well. So as the sound waves, number one, come into the microphone here, they're gonna hit and move the diaphragm, which is number two, the blue in the front there. Now you'll notice that this diaphragm is just in front of a fixed back plate, which is number three. And since the condenser microphone is powered, the electrical current passes from the diaphragm to the back plate. But when the sound waves move that diaphragm closer to the back plate, um, it changes the voltage, and that's what creates the signal in a condenser microphone. Now the lightness of this diaphragm makes it much more sensitive to sound waves, especially because it doesn't have to push a big coil like a dynamic mic, and this gives the condenser mic certain characteristics, both positive and negative. So here are some of the positive characteristics of a condenser microphone. Condenser microphones are very sensitive, and that makes them good for distance miking or miking things that are further away. Condenser microphones are also very accurate, and this is a big plus uh, when you're trying to maybe record something or you're miking something that you want to sound clean and clear, an accurate condenser mic can give you a better sound. Now there are some negatives about condenser microphones, and let's talk about those. First of all, you can generally get less volume before feedback because they're so sensitive. And um, they're not as great with really loud sounds. Now some condenser microphones do better with loud sounds and they've been working on that, so some are better. But in general, they're so sensitive that a lot of times they will clip or create distortion when you have a very loud sound you're trying to mic. And number three, they're less sturdy. Just like the dynamic mics are pretty heavy duty, the, the condenser mics are a little less sturdy. They'll take some abuse, but not nearly as much as a dynamic microphone. So just like the dynamic, we're gonna talk about some application do's and don'ts with the condenser microphone. So let's start with things that are good do's, and that is solo voice. Again, um, solo voice can be a great application for condenser microphones, and they make handheld condenser microphones just for that application. Large vocal groups, such as choirs. Now, choirs or ensembles, a condenser mic is generally a very good way to mic those. And that's a big plus when you have a big group, um, the fact that you can put the mic out a little further and capture more people um, is definitely a plus. Spoken word, again, uh, dynamic is good, but then condenser is good for spoken word. And you're going to find that a lot of podium or lectern mics and a lot of head mics or lapel mics are gonna be a condenser microphone. And so they're great for spoken word. They can make things nice and clean and clear. Acoustic instruments. I use condenser microphone on a piano. Uh, it's great for woodwinds. It's great for strings. Um, if you look at a, an orchestra, um, maybe on television or something, uh, or even a live orchestra that needs sound reinforcement, you're going to see condenser microphones everywhere because they give you that nice, clear, precise pickup. So they're wonderful for acoustic instruments. Now, as we said, there are some don'ts for condenser microphones, and let's look at a couple of those. Um, first of all, they're not so great for very loud sound sources. So generally a dynamic is gonna do best with that. Whether it's a person who's shouting into the microphone or if it's a very loud um, instrument like a trumpet or something, again, um, the dynamic is probably going to be generally a better choice for that. The second one is situations that are prone to feedback. Condenser microphones can generally just make things more likely to feedback if you use them in a situation where you have feedback problems. And so if you're going to be standing near a speaker um, or 
um, in a situation where the speaker has to be behind you, which is not optimal, a dynamic mic is going to be a much better choice than a condenser. A condenser mic is going to be much more prone to feedback. So we've talked a little bit about feedback and the two different types of microphones, but the thing that you should probably do is go back and watch uh, my polar pattern video, and I'll put it here at the end of the video as a link so you can click on it if you would like. That's going to explain even more about the characteristics of microphones and how they pick things up. So there are two you know, main characteristics uh, when you want to consider a mic use or application, and that would be polar pattern and it would be dynamic or condenser or the um, transducer type. Ooh, big words, uh, the transducer type of the microphone, how it picks the sound up. So I hope this has been a helpful video about condenser and dynamic microphones. As always, you can leave questions in the comments and I'll be glad to answer them. Thanks for watching.